Right? All year long, we preach to our kids, what are you doing to get better? What are you doing to get better? What are you doing to get better? Well, all of us now, you've taken time out of your day to come here to get better. So we're practicing what we preach to our kids. That's important. So thank you for, for attending the clinic. Kind of the objective, provide something you can immediately impl implement in your offense. Uh, show all shifts, motions, and formations can be used in any offense. Um, and then again, maybe hopefully maybe spark some interest in how to be creative. Uh, as you'll see, our offense from week to week changes. Uh, I think we do a good job of that to keep defenses on their toes. I think we're hard to, um, to, to scheme against. Um, from that standpoint, teams to pick up some of our tendencies because we're always changing. Here's our season overview in 92 season. Um, the 2016 team was a 92 season as well. From the 2016 team to this year, we only brought back one starter, and that was our center. All right, so I know you guys go on those. Graduated class, we had a senior dominant class in 16, averaged 40 points a game. We were throwing the ball a lot more in 16. All right, we were true 10 personnel. We used our running back as a pistol, and we were throwing 40 times a game. If not more, I think our highs, we had 62 attempts one game. That's where our skill was at. All right, so we brought back our center. We had some adjusting pieces, put some new kids in new positions. Um, we went to a true, we were 11 personnel, using an H back or that wing back that you've seen. And then instead of having the running back as a pistol, we had him to the side of the quarterback. Okay. Um, offensive production, uh, 17 this past year, it changed a little bit. We were 60% run, 40% pass. We really wanted to try to run the football first. We thought we were better at running the football than we were passing the football. Okay, that also happened because we had a we had a dual threat quarterback this year. 2016, we didn't have a dual threat quarterback. He was a pocket passer. Sling the ball all over. Okay? We had one-on-one -on -one kids in 16. Right? We didn't motion much. We didn't have to because our kids you know, were that gifted and we had a quarterback that could throw it. So it was just basic route concepts. We weren't really moving any pieces. Right? Uh, average yards per game, we've got 440 yards average game. Right? You can see very balanced this year in the run at 239 past 204. That's something we're proud of. I think that's what makes us tough to play defense against because we're so balanced. Uh, 31 rushing touchdowns, 27 passes, kind of there, and points per game, 37.2. All right, good year. We preached 40. Our kids have a goal. When they started last year, we want 40 a game. So we came up just a little short. However, 37 a game isn't bad. Uh, our philosophy, be multiple and explosive. Probably sounds like a slogan or tagline to a laxative brand, but that's what we want. All right, we want to be multiple and explosive. Right, our explosive plays, we categorize them by any run of 10 yards or more and any pass of 15 yards or more. We had 84 explosive runs. That was 22% of our run plays went for over 10 yards. 57 passes, that went for 15 yards or more. So 44% of our completions were at 15 yards or more. Those are explosive plays. Gets our kids excited. Our goal is 10 per game. This season, we averaged 13 per game. So 13 times a game. All right, we're striking first downs. You know first downs, extend drives, end up turning into touchdowns. All right, I think that explosive play piece really has excited our kids. All right, each day of practice, each drill we want, they're going for explosive plays. And when they come in, watch a film, we get back on Monday, how many do we have, coach? Okay, so sometimes we were a little less, sometimes we were more. Season average was 13. All right? That's something they get excited about and take pride in. Getting to our running back motion stuff a little bit. Uh, what, what we're about to show, we created week nine, which is a winner take all conference championship game. All right? We went from a one running back set to a two running back set. You'll see that in a second. We use this to really stress the linebackers and the safeties. So, right there, all right, that was something new for us. All right? It's having these two guys in the backfield here. They're both running backs. We're playing West Salem Panthers. Here, they're a two high cover four team. What we did was jump those guys out, motion them, and we just ran jet to the field. Gave us an extra blocker there. You can see we were able to get to the edge. Run that again. Those two guys motioning out. Get an extra black blocker on the back of there. Around the corner. Car gets tripped up a little bit. Block on that zone. Wait for us to get out to the perimeter. Great job at 21, wide receiver blocking. That is something we stress all the time. 
This is the first time we show that. Later in the game, we jump into the same thing. Again, you can see they're a too high team. Okay, cover four, they want to really top two. And here, when we motion him out at top two, all right, this linebacker thinks he has some help. And we'll see here, we jump down to it. There's no one left. All right, and that was just simple adjustments that we made, that we created just for this game. We're not changing anything up front. Jump down to it. They're probably thinking jet sweep again. Linebacker lets him pass. It's an easy pitch and catch. It's a big touchdown in this game. That was the first one of the touchdowns. I know it's pretty tight, but you can see that boundary safety. We gave him a two, so he had a top. All right? Left no one, no one else for him. What we did here, it starts a little early. Uh, we had just had a turnover. This is right before the half. And before in that two running back set, both of those guys were running backs. And one of the kids um, was playing hockey right over, right over in the same building. All right, catching the football, tracking the football is not one of his best things. All right. So what we did right before half, because this is our T receiver who usually isn't in on this play, is we just told him to go back here. All right. We just told him you're going to motion down and you're going to run a seam or a vertical. All right. So the first time he'd go back, we jumped down, we ran the jet, the second time we ran it and we ran the, the seam to the running back and now this time we're going to fake the jet and throw him on the seam. Right, these are all plays in the first half that we didn't run at all during the regular season. Right? Again, being multiple and explosive um, in, in things we do. So you kind of put the safeties in a bind. Good route, good throw. And we like to see this from other teams. <laughs> I'm sure none of you guys have seen that from your kids. So, so then we took that running back motion to our level one playoff game. We made a wrinkle in it. We used use it with a different personnel group. We incorporated our H or that, that tight end wing that you might call it in your offense. And then we utilize a little play action of it. So here now, this is our H. We call him our H, right? And then now we're just doing a one running back motion. Again, we're playing another two high team. He's stopping two. He's stopping two here. So we come out, we motion him down, show that same jet look. For tight end seam, ball is slippery on that play. All right, but obviously we had it. You can see here, we're putting this safety. Now he becomes a run player on that jet, and he gives him up behind him. And this is something we just put in as a wrinkle uh, for this week. Safety comes down, right over top. There we go. And two guys, we're a no-huddle team. Sorry, I haven't mentioned that. We're a no-huddle team. We have two tempos. We have fast and faster. Okay, we signal everything in from the sideline, all right, and we want to play quick, all right? I think that what we've seen by that is it locks defenses into one look. They can't make as many checks um, as they would like, all right, with their motions. So a lot of times we lock them into something we like, and we're just go, go, go. So this time we're going down. So what we did here. This guy here, that's that T receiver. He's no longer an H. You can see we also use a little bit of a stack here. All right. A lot of times we found in our league is sometimes the defensive kids are over coachable. They're very coachable. Coach says top two. If he lines out here in stacks, I'm going to top two. Well, he's still a quarter, right? He's still a quarter safety, so now it almost turns into a one high look. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to jump him, that motion down, which creates a boundary number two for this safety. And we tucked our slot receiver, who normally lines up in the slot, as that H. Safety goes over. Linebacker thinks he has help and can't run with him. Oops. 
Oops, sorry about that. Here we can see when he goes out, he goes with them, we're able to hit an explosive play. So this time here, what we did is we went back to that two back. Now this is a running back. Again, we bounce, or bounce those guys down there. We call it our jump motion with our goal of splitting uh, the, the safeties. This time we use them to actually run our jet. So now we have our H wrapping, secure the backer. We've got our other uh, running back who's out in our slot receiver taking the safety. And it makes 50. Next eleven year run for us. <clears throat> this one starts a little late again, but the same thing. I'm messing up these buttons, sorry. We had our two running backs set. They both jump down. Again, all we're trying to do is create the safeties to widen out so now they have two number two receivers. Okay, when both our running backs are back here. All right, they're keen on them. We jump them out. And what we're looking to do, the last time we ran this, we ran the jet. This time we come back, fake the jet, and now we have the tight end seat. That one he caught. Again, it's all the same stuff, and it doesn't change anything up front for those guys. We're just moving pieces around. All right, manipulating where we're going to put their safeties and where there's voids in the defense. And yep, that one came back too. The line was cheap. Get into our, 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 we call it mo motion. You might call it a jet motion. We do have both. When We call it mo motion when, the, when our T receiver, our innermost, our slot receiver just moves formation to the other side. If we want to tag it as mo motion, then we know it's, a, it's an actual jet fake out of the motion. Right? So there's mo and jet. Kind of looks similar. Again, we're able to change the formation pre-snap. We're showing the defense one thing, and then we're changing it before we snap the football. Right? We, we feel it changes the defense alignment. It also changes the responsibilities. Now, who do I have? If I had number two, and now two is gone, you know, we're just getting the defensive kids thinking. And then distractive movement. So that would just be... Oh, dang it. That right there, this is just our mo motion. You can see there's no jet fake. All right? And what we're doing here is really trying to manipulate the field safety, get flow one way, and that's just QB counter. Oops, one more. That's not right. Flow one way, kick out, and again, we had a dual threat quarterback this year who was very skilled. That was a big play for us. Heck of an effort by the defender to track him down. Here we're backed up, third and third and eleven from our own thirteen. We need a big third down play. Here, all we're doing is mo motioning here to create space. We know we want to come back and throw this back route here. All we did is just opened up a window to make that happen. Clear one guy out, come back to it. So sometimes we're motioning a kid to be a part of the play, sometimes we're motioning them just create some create some more, more room out there. This doesn't give us a very good Again, moving the chains. This time we're motioning them, doing that same motion with our T receiver, we call them. Okay, now we're just motioning them to throw a ball. Get out on the space. So you can see we can tag our mo motion on anything we do. Um, you know, it's not any set play out of any set formation. And again, sometimes we're motioning them to the play, sometimes we're motioning away from the play, sometimes we're motioning them 
to get him running and get the ball in space. Okay, this team didn't really adjust much to our motions. We thought that gave us advantage to get out, get out on the edge. Here we're playing more of a one high team. Okay, they're a, they're a cover three team. They're playing one high. We set our formation into the boundary. And as you can see, we're going to use this motion to just manipulate that high safety. All we need them doing is moving one way just a little bit to come back and throw our tight end seat. So we're looking at him here. He's got one, he's got the middle third. We're just motioning simply. All we needed at that is that little lean. He's gonna let him run. That backer thinks he has help over the top. And we were able to move that safety just a little bit. All right, we just line up and run that. We're probably not getting him. Also, we like to use it, so that was our mo motion stuff. We also like to use our mo motion to boot. To boot, uh, we feel it's difficult for linebacker responsibilities. Mix misdirection and opposite flow. Again, we get the defense thinking we're moving one way, and then we move the opposite. And then again, it gives us movement pre-snap and post-snap because we're booting on it. Here we're playing a more man team. We're able to keep that tight end. Again, move in um, over there. Delays, and then he's just out into the flat. All right, backer gets washed up. He's got jet motion he's got to deal with, and then uh, pick up his responsibility in the pass game. Disregard the left tackle, 15 yards don't kill block. <laughs> Going to remove him, their man. 18 does a nice job, sneak behind him. Again, little dump off. But again, it's also cheap. But the flag was for holding on defense. Was it? Yeah, they were Good. That's <laughs> just. Similar to what uh, Coach Badger was talking about here. So, what we're trying to do too, we're just using him to motion out. But again, we got almost what we call a go route from down here, number one. So he's out of there. So that's that what he had called the stretch for them. All right. Since he's out, all right, now our running back is just going to come here and he's got the flap. And then our H backside here, he's the one that has that shallow. All right. I think, or, or dig, they can call it the shallow route, flat route. You can see here all this develops. Get him moving one way, come around. There's that nice middle void with that H coming across. Good job by our number one receiver picking up a block there. You can see here how this safety motion went away. He's going to take our back. And the motion, the other high safety, the boundary safety went with the motion. And he just took himself out of the play to allow this shadow route or this dig route, banana route, to come across in this void here. Good job, quarterback, reading almost the same progression that Coach Badger talked about, uh, moving short to long. <coughs> we also have a halo motion, so now that same T receiver motioning, he's going to come motion behind the quarterback. That gives us a different look. And it gives us an extra guy for a fake, a ball carrier, a blocker, wide receiver, however we choose to use him, because now he's in the backfield. It really provides us a triple threat. All right, with our dual threat quarterback this year, it really allowed us to run true zone triple where it's either a give, quarterback, or now he has a pitch man. It's a good look here. This, we're playing Holman, great team. They're, they're a man team. They play man. 
So we're going to halo motion, take him, he takes pitch, and then no one's left for the quarterback besides that middle backer. All right, and then again, kid is pretty athletic and makes a big play for us. So now this guy here, essentially he becomes the quarterback player. There's a lot of other stuff in front of him that he's got to get through. All right? The kid that goes with him in motion does a great job. He's man to him. He does a great job, and he stays on his responsibility. The DN here is their dive player or their running back player. He takes him. Then again, with our moving pieces, it creates space. Allows a nice running lane for our <coughs> quarterback. So what we do now is we come back, and we have Halo where he returns where he came from. So this guy last time in man had to run with him. So what we do is just run him to the same side, and now he's going to come back to where he came from. Now we're looking to get it to the pitch man. Again, it's not a touchdown, but we're down there around the 30. It's third and 10. We pick up 10. We keep the chains moving. That was a big play for us. You'll see here how he tries to overrun it with the motion. And now the responsibility of him allows us to get the pitch out on the outside. some guys begging for more. I don't know if your guys' head coaches do that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get it? No. Oh, your poor <laughs> Never do. <laughs> Never do. Again, here we're just using him to run our true triple here. Again, it pulls a guy out of that. At 27, we kind of put him in space. Still reading this end here, or H, arc, arc blocks. It was true, true zone triple for us. Run it one more time. Student section is highly involved, you can see. Yeah. That's a whole other topic. Okay, good complimentary off of this is now we're just using your halo then as a play action. Okay, using him as a play action, trying to sell that zone triple. All right, we can't see him here, but the safety is right back about over here. And he's, he's seen this, and he becomes pitch man. What we do, again, they're in quarters. You can see they're giving us good inside leverage. Because then we just use that halo motion to influence the safety to come down, thinking it's triple, and to throw a post behind him. Again, that's now the safety. Unfortunately, we don't hit them, but we have opportunity. Use a little bit of wide receiver stack formation. Uh, misaligns the safeties in two high coverages. It really stresses the outside linebackers in one high. Uh, creates confusion pre-snap because a lot of teams don't see it. Um, it also covers up H's false start. You'll see that in a second. Actually, on the first clip. Okay, we have two high team here again. We're playing again. This kid was taught all week or told you got to cover up two. Well, we put two way out here, he goes with him, right? Now, really, this safety should probably be cross-keying him and maybe cheat over a little bit. I'm sure as much as we really cross-face run a lot, he also has a run fit in here, all right? So with these stack receivers, they must be covering up that guy, or he isn't really paying attention. As you can see, this guy gets about a three-step head start on this seat. And again, it's, it's nothing real fancy. I think we just, we just feel that by formationally, we can create easy matches for us. And that one was, that one, you know, 
pretty easy for us. And we're just stretching those safeties, those linebackers are thinking they have more help than what they do. Oh, this one's better for me. <clears throat> so this time our stack is out here. This is a, th this is a one high team, they play a lot of cover three. Again, we can see by this stack, usually if he's here, we're playing into his hand. But now when we stack him, he's kind of confused. Do I go all the way out there? Do I come in here? He kind of just doesn't do much. Right? Kind of just sticks right in the middle. All right? What we run here then is actually, you know, post fade, and the corner takes the post. Again, you can see we miss a couple shots too. That's the definition of open. When you got an open receiver, don't throw a lot of bounds. All right? But those are the hardest throws to make. Got a guy wide open, it doesn't make a great catch, but they, they had ruled him out. You can see the only thing we did there to create that much space is stack them. And the corner takes the post, he's really not a factor. Are you big on big here, Coach? Are we what? Are you big on big for your protection? What do we do for protection? Well, most of the time we slide. Um, i trying to remember what we did against Sparta. I'll tell you. What's that? What they're, was asking, they're asking here? the tough questions. Uh, what are we doing for protection? We slid, right? Against Sparta? I think we slid versus everybody. Just what everybody was sliding. Yeah. You we know, always slide away from the back. But, but if, if we knew with them, it was going to end up being big on big. We didn't have to do much. We're, we're yeah. moving enough guys out of the box. They can't, you know, it's six on six because they were us on odd stack team. To be honest, I don't do much with our own line. These guys take care of it. They do that, and they, have, they say, oh, it's going to be protected. That's how we're going to do it. Okay. I don't got to worry too much time about that. Coach Yash, Coach Fox, another coach, they handle the old line. They're doing those. No, when I say slide, we, we, we don't ever full slide anything. Yeah. Half slide. Our backside guy is always going to stay home on the tackle, and we'll slide from guard everybody else to whatever we call that way. But we, we don't ever full slide because we can't cut an end, and we didn't throw quick as nearly. The previous year, we full slid a lot because we threw quick. Too quick. We didn't throw quick nearly as much as we did this year, so we kept the tackle home, and then the back fit where guards slid from. We had to throw quick last year. Yes, we did. <laughs> How had the guys go? Oh, did you like to slide to a little bit? Uh, Odd front, we, we usually slid um, away from the formation, okay. knowing that they, they, if we were on trips, they weren't going to be able to bring pressure from the formation side because of the handy cover guys. Here's our level two game. Obviously, we do uh, had to get creative again to try to create some space. We did a lot of stack here, right? And then what we're going to end up doing is jump motioning both our H and our back out. All right, we just call it Q fly. He's got the option. If he has the edge with these two guys blocking, our quarterback's just going to try to beat it to the edge. If not, we're one on one there, and it's just going to be essentially like a, a bubble. All right, so that's kind of our read. Okay, I should get it to the running back. Yeah, you're trying to create some space. Option him, get out, got some guys in front for some blocks. Play action, a little variety in here now. Uh, obviously, play action opens up windows and creates easy throws. Um, opportunity for explosive plays and balances your offense and keeps defense on. Here are some of our highlights and why we like to play action. Here this time, it's just a straight, straight drop back. All right, we're not no motion on this one. Again, they're a two high team. Now we've got a safety here, safety there. H is tucked in here. Sometimes he'll line up inside. Sometimes we'll move him outside. Now we're doing a show on this run, run action here. 
and then throw a post behind the field safety. Comes down, good throw leading them to grass. Right, using really that middle of the field. This time here we move our H. We also move him a lot. Alright, we start him on one side, move him to the other side. Alright, by moving him over, we're able to create another blocker. And then we do play action on our bubble. And that's just simply to just hold him for just a second so we can get to the edge. Move him over, quick play action that allows our H to really arc out and catch him. Again, we just line up and try to zip a bubble out here. This kid's got his beat. Right? So we're going to bring that H over, give a token fake here to hold three, <coughs> and also allow our H back to get out and arc block him. That's just one-on-one -on, -one on the edge. Great block pair number one receiver locking him up. Right, another explosive play for us. So we had thrown bubble earlier in the game. We are having a tough time. We do like to throw bubble. They almost went more man to this side, brought him down a lot, and told him he was the bubble player. All right, so all we do, bring the H to this side, give a little fake to hold the backer, and now we're just running a slant with our number one to replace that safety. Lean him to grass. Here's a little variety here. It's a motion we didn't do that much, but we still liked it. It was a week prior to this, as we use this kid here to motion or in motion to crack the overhang backer and throw swing. All right? We knew that wasn't a good look versus these guys this, this, this week. So what we were really trying to do is then just influence the safety to come down and think that's their swing to throw a post behind them. Again, you can see these guys are really giving us, they want to funnel everything inside. When he's three yards outside with hips turned in. So we knew we were going to get the in-breaking route. Motion's in. We shall swing, able to get that safety to come down. Again, we miss it, but we have opportunities there. There's a lot of room out there to throw post. Another variety of motion we did. We just brought him in tight. You know, it's a number three RT receiver. So he's lined up as more H, so this is our true 10 personnel. And all we're doing is getting him motioning out on the run. We're going to crack here. It's not a very good crack, but we get him motioning out and away just to throw him bubble. And we're able to get to the edge faster by just putting guys in movement. So I got a little fun. This uh, is the same play that conference championship game. We came back, and this is our first play to open up the second half with a double ball. Heavy package will also move when we bring in both tight ends. All right, we'll also move around. Uh, I think it makes us less predictable in a highly predictable situation. Slows down defense and allows you to outnumber defenders at the point of attack. Big rain game here. We ended up having to not play this game on Friday night. We actually moved into a different site Saturday afternoon because our field was in such bad condition. Uh, but you can see here we bring in 88. He's our other H back or tight end. We go empty here. That's our running back, and we're just going to motion him across to show that jet. And with the flow, we bring an extra dude in here. Just creating more guys, point of attack. 
This is also a good motion if you want to put it in, is keep a kid on the sideline and then just say run out there. But again, it's kind of a similar. That, that really confuses them. When you only have 10, then you just run that guy out there. Um, similar situation as the last clip, we bring in the heavy, and now, you know, I mean, there's times where we just get heavy in there, line this kid up, and just smash it. I mean, that is something we do too. All right. But a lot of times we found it easy, especially with a running quarterback or somebody downhill, is get that running back moving for flow, and you also have an extra blocker in here. Again, a little disguised motion here. Not much at all, T to be honest. One thing too is we don't have a playbook. Um, I, I, we felt that by having a playbook and saying these are set plays at the beginning of the year, by, by the start of it you're already capping yourself on what you can run. All right? And so much in the year just comes and develops. What are we good at? What aren't we good at? All right? So every week on the kids are from the start of the year, they bring their own notebook and then we just have printouts of, you know, preset the line in there and the field. And as we're creating and making these plays, they're just writing it in their notebook and they have it. So every Sunday we come in as a coaching staff. All right, what's something we haven't done yet that we can do? And since we're no huddle, we just tag it in how we call it in. All right, so it's really no verbiage. It's just, okay, this week we're going to run jump motion. The running back, you're going to start in the backfield, and you're just jumping down into the number three receiver. This is the, this is the signal. This is what it looks like. All right, now if we go jump jet, which we already have jet motion in, now you're the jet guy. All right? And then that's just built into our team time. And it's not all live every week. No. We, we don't roll in and put this in week one and say, now remember everything. You know, there's that West Salem package that you saw. It was one, mo one shift and one motion. And, and we worked on it a lot that week. That week. Mm -hmm. You know, we had been running our base offense of plays for nine weeks at that point. Our schemes up front for alignment didn't change at all. No. So, you guys will go work on motions and stuff, and we won't even be there. No. They'll run through it all in air without, yeah. without the line in air. I think, too, it helps the kids, for our kids anyway. I mean, we're fortunate. Our cards are very smart. They do well in the classroom. I mean, the past two years when we put all this stuff in, I mean, they're, they're, they're really good at learning and picking up on this stuff. The other thing is they want to learn it. They're engaged in all the meetings because they do it something new, and they want to see how it works, and they have input on it. All of our signals, stuff, or even what we call it, you know, we ask the kids, what do you want to call it? This is what it's going to look like. What do you want to call it? What's going to help you remember it? All right, we come up with a name. All right, now what's a signal we can do for that? Okay, everybody remember that? You know, so it really kept them engaged too, and them feeling like they are a part of the process and some of that creativity. There's been some ugly games too. Like if you watched our Holman film, there was like a flag every other one because guys weren't getting set. Guys were covering other guys up. And that was a, a time where we went back on Sunday and said, what are we doing? All right, what do we what are we not doing in practice that's allowing this to happen? And we had to, you know, we had to talk and say, all right, with the guys and coaches, of you need to get set, you need to get set quicker because we're no huddle, you can't be lazy, and, and start chewing some guys out because if it was going to work, you can't have a flag get rid of the play. Mm -hmm. Here, just one, two. We got our heavy package in. Um, Start those guys on one side of the formation, they come over. Again, we're just running zone read with an extra half in the kickoff block there. Run that one back, coach. From this angle? Uh, yeah. Here's another thing with this one. So you ask, you know, how much they need to know. Okay, so 88 was always going to be like the down blocker or whatever he did on this play, and 18 was always going to be the kickout. So when we motioned, we made sure that we motioned or shifted so that 88 still did the exact same thing that he always did on his side. So that the guys didn't have to know both roles. He just knew I'm always a kick out, I'm always a down guy. So that it cuts down your learning time, right? Remember heavy 88 and 18. And you snap over there. Runs that zone. Kick out.
Yeah, and sometimes you gotta get creative. Alright. We took that tight end, tried to make it look like he, those are our two tight ends, that's our left tackle moving over. That's 88, who's our other tight end, with those two dudes off the line, that now makes him eligible. So he looks like our tackle that we move both tight ends over. And got one. We were down pretty big. At halftime, this is our first drive out, we needed to score. Um, at least one score to get us get us some momentum. We got down in there. That's the one we went to. Again, that's 88, our tight end. They were telling tackle he's going to go in motion. Oh, yeah, they get excited. <laughs> so, again, hopefully just creating a little bit of confusion. Um, some contact information there. Um, again, it's every week. We're just, what do we want to do this week, All right? Um, and again, it's just a different motion or a different set. Are we going to motion one running back? Are we going to motion two running backs? Are we going to, you know, whatever it may be. I mean, we did get into some wildcat stuff a little bit and put our quarterback out. Then we actually jet motioned our quarterback because he's, he's a very good runner, so we felt comfortable doing that. Um, again, it, it's been fun. I think it's given us a big advantage. We don't have big, big guys, big line. Uh, a lot of our kids are basketball kids, meaning they're athletic, they're fast, they get out and run. So we had to use those tools to our advantage. Um, again, if anything, maybe it sparked some interest on in just maybe moving some pieces around. I know some of you guys have the luxury of just lining up, and this is what we're going to show, and you know we're running it, and we're just going to run it at you. Right? Unfortunately, that's not, we haven't found that to work for us. So if you want to reach out, anything, again, I appreciate you attending and safe travels home. Best of luck. Up to the season.